And rounding out our 2022 Portland Open Press Conference, we have the luxury of speaking with Teo Pazzi. Welcome to the press conference, Teo. Thank you. And I think I'm going to start off with, when did you find disc golf? I found disc golf when I moved out to Portland in 1997. Um, at Dartmouth College, I was one of the co-founders of the Ultimate Frisbee team my freshman year of college and played a little bit of Ultimate and then stopped playing, just, you know, played catch for many years. Came out here and had never played disc golf on a basket. I'm like, wow, there's real courses with real baskets. And went out and uh, started playing and just got thoroughly hooked on it. And one thing led to another. And one of the first things right here locally to Portland is that you actually sanctioned the first Portland PDGA sanctioned tournament. Tell us what that was and where. Sure. So the kind of the backstory is in the Northwest there was sort of this, you know, idea that the PDGA was a little snooty and snobby and, you know, we don't need to sanction our tournaments. So very few tournaments were sanctioned in the Northwest. And I wanted to see us, you know, start stepping it up. And so I got together with Todd Andrews, um, another former PDGA board member, and we created the McIver Open at Milo McIver. And this was back when it was a kind of simple 18-hole layout. And that was in 2001, and um, that led into to a number of things, including the Oregon series starting up a year later. And for those viewers that are local to Oregon, we've heard of the Olay, we've heard of the Oregon series, but everyone out there knows what the Beaver State fling is. Where did that start for you? and? How do you feel about what it's grown into today? Um, well, the second part of that's easy. <laughs> I'm amazed and, and super happy, but um, essentially it started out as a C tier, and there were a couple people that ran it, and I might have been at Dabney State Park at that point rather than McIver, and then I joined the board in, of uh, the PDJ board in 2002, and so, sort of in parallel with all the stuff I was doing there as a volunteer, um, the Oregon series was taking over from... Um, uh, Tom Embry, who had done the Northwest Series for so many years. And um, so then the Beaver State fling, fling just grew from a C tier one year to a B tier the next year to an A tier the next year. And then I was on the, the board when we, you know, approved the national tour and the initial national tour. And so the Beaver State Fling became a, a national tour event. Some people said there might have been some favoritism there, but <laughs> we won't get into that. <laughs> I, I, I don't think anyone's worried about that. But <laughs> it, it ended up then being this amazing event. And then over the years, it just grew and grew and grew. And whenever I talked to pros and used to go out there, I, I always heard, you know, this is one of the best events on the tour year after year after year. And so we were super happy as the initial team that built that. Um, and then we turned it over to, to Jeff and Jeff the Jeffs, and they ran it for many years. And now to see this event here and just the growth of the sport is amazing. And knowing that next weekend is actually the Beaver State Fling as well. It is a silver series on the Disc Golf Pro Tour Elite uh, Travels. Um, my last question for you is, will you be able to attend, and what does that mean for you right here this weekend? I'm definitely planning on attending. You know, there's some, some people, like I came up and saw Juliana there and just gave her a big hug and hadn't, see, hadn't seen her in like 15 years when I used to come out here and watch her compete at, at you know, when she was uh, winning the Worlds every other year. And then Scott Stokely, you know, he came out here and put on a clinic when we did the first, uh, right around when we were doing the first Beaver State Flang. And I remember him getting an ace. He stayed at my house. And I think, is he going to be here this weekend? Uh -huh. So I'm so looking forward to seeing him. And then uh, next weekend, knowing that, you know, the back to back events are here, I'll probably go out and check out some of that. Although at the same time, my wife is graduating, so I may not be able to attend as much of that one. Hi, Teo. Grant Zellner, PDGA. You're one of three former presidents of the PDGA Board of Directors that come from Oregon. What is it about the disc golf culture in Oregon that produces leaders in the game? That's a great question. Um, the, there were, there's four board members that were all on the board at roughly the same time. So I, I joined first as regional director in 2002 and then became president and chairman and uh, uh, commissioner in 2003. And then Todd Andrews and Chris Bellinger were two of the three people, four people that ran the Oregon series. And then I convinced them to run for the board so we could really have a lot of representation in the Northwest. And then, of course, Rebecca Duffy. So four of us from this area have, have represented the Northwest pretty well for, for quite a while. Among other things, in your tenure, you instituted the national tour, uh, competitive division changes, you created the rating system. 
What are your thoughts looking back about how things have blossomed stint, since and how those items are foundational elements for us now in 2022? Sure. It all started in 2002. I got recruited for the board, and Pat Govang and I went up and visited Brian Henniger, who is the PDJ administrator at the time was his title, the only full-time employee, and he and his wife were running the, uh, the organization out of their little tiny house on Toronto Island, and they had their living room full of all the materials. They tried to do all the fulfillment themselves, you know, all the, the player packs, and they'd go back and forth on the ferry trying to keep up with it. And Pat and I went out there, and it's like, you know, this is not going to scale up, <laughs> basically, so we need to do something about it. So we got the board members, we got some really strong board members back then, and we essentially put a plan into place and said, okay, we got to grow this. We had a pretty big coffer, you know, money that had been saved. It's like, you got to spend that. If you really want to grow, you got to spend that money. And so we, we did all those things. We implemented the live scoring system. Uh, Steve Gans and Jay Haas and I uh, built that ourselves. And, you know, so you could actually record scores hole by hole for the first time. Uh, you know, and previously they just had static pages for their scores and stuff. So all those things. And then working with Chuck Kennedy on the rating system, he had this great idea for a rating system, but he didn't know, you know, how to make it happen. I said, well, I'm a computer geek, so I'll figure it out. And we implemented all the backbone for that that has you know, lasted quite a while, and then Steve Gans, you know, kind of redid it with the new tournament manager stuff uh, a few years ago. But it, it was all foundational to help the organization be able to scale up and grow. And now to see where it is and find out the other day that there's 31 full-time employees is just flabbergasting. Now, when you built that original PDGA live scoring system, did you foresee this, meaning you sitting here on a live disc golf network broadcast? No, I absolutely did not. And What's gotten me really reinvigorated is by watching Disc Golf Network. Um, I subscribed recently and watched a couple things. It's like, wow, this is really, really good professional coverage. I can't believe it. And, you know, I, I put it on my Roku in the hotel room and, and at home. It's like, it's an app. It's not just a website. It's, it's super well done. And I'm, I'm very impressed. And, that's, and the partnership with the PDGA is just sort of this win-win thing that's just going to continue to fuel the sport. We appreciate you, Teo. Thank you. Thanks. How's it going, Teo? Great. We're going to jump back a little bit. So Zoe asked you when you got started in disc golf, and you mentioned that you came here in 97 and started an ultimate team at Dartmouth. Starting an ultimate team means that you've already been interested in the flying disc before that. I want to go back. What was your first taste of just throwing a flying disc in general? Where was it, and what were you throwing? I'm sure I threw a Frisbee when I was a kid, right? I knew what a Frisbee was. But then my senior year in prep school in Massachusetts, I, they had a, a course that was supposed to be like a senior. I thought it was a senior gut course. It's like playing Frisbee. We'll play ultimate. It's like, yay. And then they, we went out there, and they made us run all the time. It's like, you know, this is hard work. <laughs> But I got into it and then went to Dartmouth and th there's no team here yet and a number of us had been playing in high school and mm -hmm. got together and said we need a team, right? Because a lot of the other colleges had their established teams for two or three years. So we started ours out and once again I was the computer geek. I did the mailing list on the, the big school mainframe so that we could stuff it in people's uh, um, letter boxes and they could you know, know that there was practice and stuff. So that, that's really what got me going back then. And every time I come back to Portland it's incredible to just see the local community and how big it grows seemingly year after year and how many passionate recreational players we see as well not just competitive players from someone who's sitting front row to watch this happen what does it mean to you to see the community blow up so much for me it's just like to see something that I was involved in and was hoping would take off actually succeed I, I consider this one of the legacies in my life you know having helped make this happen and so I just want to see it keep growing and growing and growing. And, you know, the same is true for Ultimate. My niece is playing. She just played in national championships for UVM last week, and I was watching that on streaming. It's like, wow, this just the, the disc sports are growing and will continue to grow. Well, thanks for joining us, and enjoy the rest of the Thank week. Thank you.